Good evening and welcome and thank you for being here tonight. I call this meeting of Montgomery County School Board to order at 7 o'clock on April 3rd, 2018. Please stand for Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Our student school board representatives tonight from Blacksburg High School, Stephen and Eastman uh, High School, uh, Maria, are going to read our mission, vision, and core value statements. Uh, yo. We would like to welcome all of our guests to our school board meeting tonight. Here in Montgomery County Schools, our mission is that every student will graduate career and college ready and become a productive, responsible citizen. Our vision is to inspire learning by pr providing a nurturing environment, positive relationships, high expectations, and continuous growth. Here in Montgomery County Schools, our values for everyone include physical safety and emotional well-being, mutual trust and respect, open communication, accountability, engagement, and lifelong learning, and cultural diversity. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, both of you. The next uh, item on our agenda is the adoption of the agenda. May I have a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We have an agenda. Next item is our superintendent's announcements, Dr. Meyer. All right, thank you. Uh, first, let me say the, uh, the, our young students from Price's Fork that are here tonight did an absolutely wonderful job with the uh, Wax Museum. Um, I learned a lot in the last uh, 20 minutes. It was just absolutely amazing, but just did an absolutely wonderful job. and can't, can't wait to hear more from you in a few minutes. Um, a lot's been happening the last couple of weeks. Um, of course, we've continued with bad weather and which has caused, it caused delays and closing of our schools. Um, and so we, uh, I'm glad everyone is back and hopefully we can continue for the remainder of the year on a regular schedule. So we shall see. Um, we, although even with the bad weather, we've been able to get some athletic events in. Um, I was able to go to the Auburn Eastmont softball and baseball uh, games a couple of weeks ago, and uh, that, that was a, it was a cold afternoon, but it was, it was fun to watch our, our, our students compete there. Um, also was able to go to Christiansburg High School. They did an absolutely wonderful job with the night on Broadway. If you didn't get a chance to see that, I mean, you missed something special. Um, just an absolutely wonderful performance. Um, Gilbert Linkus, they did their passion projects a couple of weeks ago. A lot of our elementary schools do passion projects, and if you get a chance to see uh, to see um, any of those, I, I would highly encourage any of you to go see the passion projects within our school division. Um, also had the uh, the, um, the the pleasure a couple weeks ago to to go to the Christiansburg Institute on campus, and it's the first time that that uh, the buildings have been opened up for me and. Uh, and myself and Mr. Dickinson actually uh, were able to walk through the old buildings and went into the uh, current museum. So we really did enjoy that. Um, that we look forward to our continued partnership with uh, the Christiansburg Institute and the Alumni Association. So that's it. Thank you, Dr. Mm -hmm. And our next item will be our awards, honors, and recognitions part of the program, which we always look forward to. Okay, yes, uh, let's see. This time, Ms. Rourke, if you would come, um, come forward. Continue with the great program. Yeah, Dr. Meyer, members of the board, we're excited to be here tonight, and I know some of you were able to come out and meet some of our um, <clears throat> famous Americans that third graders have been researching at Price's Fork. So, Miss Karen Shepard is here representing our third grade team and is going to lead you through a little, um, just a review of the project and how um, the Wax Museum idea came about. Um, and all of our third graders participated. Of course, we just had a representation for you here tonight. But I'm going to let Karen come up and um, guide you through this short presentation. And we just want to recognize, maybe real quickly before Karen starts, students that are here, if you want to stand, and we can give you a nice round of applause for being here tonight.
Thank you all so much. I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Shepard so she can tell you a little bit more about the project. Thanks for having us this evening. We were really excited to be here and get to share a little bit of our project with the students actually being here. And in the presentation we're going to watch, we have some more students who weren't able to be here that are going to give you some additional information about how, how what we did in the process. And we're also going to look at ways that we connected it to our five C's. Creative thinking. The students were given personal choice of who they wanted to research and also if they wanted to work collaboratively with others and if, if they wanted to work in one group and switch to a different one to get different feedback and input. So here's a few of our students telling you about how they got started. Don't know how to make that make sound. <laughs> Coming up. I was gonna say, I know we we played it a lot at school. Well, so. We played we played it here too. There's a switch I'm missing. It's okay. Ethan's gonna fix it. He's way smarter than I. Creative thinking? Yes. Perfect. We made biographies off of people we picked. We put, we got some information from the encyclopedia and some books. We could work with a partner or we could work by ourselves. And we helped people that needed help with theirs and, and fix their mistakes. The books that we, we got the books from Miss Shepherd in the library. We put all our information into a graphic organizer, then put it into Google Classroom. This was Harriet Tubman. The person I chose was Benjamin. Moving on to citizenship, the project enabled kids to util utilize information technology in a number of ways. They used online resources, some of the classes used the green room, and some of the classes used Google Classroom as ways to present <coughs> some of what the children had done. There's some students who want to tell you about that. When we started our when we started our biography research. We went to an encyclopedia online called Veronica, and we trust that by our school because it says true facts about someone we're researching, by, like Helen Keller. And whenever you search things up on Google, if you um, go to look at images on the web for research that you might need, then you shouldn't like you should always write down the um, page number or the person who created its name because if you um, don't it's sort of like doing like a research box like you could take their name out of it and put your name in it but that wouldn't be right because you're taking all their credit for it. <coughs> and a little bit on using the green room. <coughs> The green screen. Our class put together videos on the green screen to make 
videos for our wax museum. When we were making the videos, after we did them, we actually changed the green screen on an app on a tablet to post a picture that was actually the green screen so you could see a picture behind them. Um, and we're going to put um, our videos on the Google Classroom so we can show our parents our, our videos about the green screen. Collaboration. Some of the sh students chose to work on different people, but they had to use like their creative thinking to figure out how would they mix those people together to present all three different um, biographies. So Elijah is going to tell you about that. Okay, so the way me, Zora, and Lillian collaborated was that it, we started off with a project for Helen Keller. But then we realized that we needed to have everybody be a different person. So we had one person be Helen Keller, which was Zora. We had one person be Eddie Sullivan, which was Lillian. And we had one person be Louie Braille, which was me. And then after we practiced all of our things that we needed to say for it, we went up to where we were going to be for our presentation. Somebody came up at the start button, and we started our presentation. And it starts off with me saying, have this on color by handing her a braille card. And Klaja was out of town tonight, but he actually handed out braille cards to the different people who attended the museum at our school for his part, part of his presentation, which was really neat. <laughs> Critical thinking. Some of the students worked on the same person, but they had to decide how to divide it up so that maybe one was the person when they were younger and one older. I think in one there was a ghost of the person in the person. So <laughs> here's a little bit about how they collaborated and shared ideas. We both wanted, we both wanted to do Pocahontas. Uh, we thought that it would be interesting to do it together. We, we didn't fight over it, so what we did was we made up our mind before we ever started on Pocahontas. I want to be her sister, and Haley wanted to be Pocahontas. I thought that it was very interesting that Pocahontas had a hundred moms. And I, what I thought was interesting was that she was the first Native American princess to get married to an Englishman in, fif in 15, um, 16. We both wanted to do Abraham Lincoln, so we um, made a team. So what we did is, at first we decided like what part of his life we wanted, so then we finally came to an agreement of he's going to be the younger one and the older one. So um, we started on our story, and then we thought we made a great team because it turned out really well. <laughs> we both wanted to do Pocahontas. Communication was a really important part of this project. Um, they had a number of opportunities to practice all kinds of communication and um, expressing opinion, opinions, making eye contact, presenting information succinctly and confidently in oral presentations, actively listening to others, and asking and responding to questions from others. There's important things that you need to know about a speech. You need to practice a lot of times and speak clear as you can make eye contact. And you, we recommended other people and that's what you want to do too. And we had really fun doing it. And I think you will too. <laughs> so after they did all of the 
deciding who they were going to research and practicing many, many times and collaborating and changing and tweaking, it came time for the final presentations. And they invited family members, friends, we had them on different days. So without, throughout the school, teachers and other students came from all over the school on different days to visit, just like you all have an opportunity to tonight. And he, we got wonderful feedback from our parents. And here's one of our parents who was willing to let us record her thoughts on it. Did you like the wax museum? I love the wax museum. I think my favorite part was one day when I picked you up from school, on the way home, you started um, reciting your little speech about Abraham Lincoln. And um, I was very impressed because you had a, a, a paragraph worth of speech um, memorized and it, I really enjoyed that. I, I thought that was awesome. <laughs> and we had a wonderful time doing it. So thanks for letting us present. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Shepard. Yeah, great job, and thank you to our teachers, and thank you all the students participated. Uh, being a VAX person is not easy. You have to memorize and sit still, and the sit still part is harder than the memorization. <laughs> but they did a great job. Okay, thanks. Uh, this time, Dr. Graham, if you'll come up to the podium to assist us with our honors, awards, and recognitions. First, I have to say, Price's Fork, that was awesome tonight. Really enjoyed the Wax Museum. We're going to begin our honors and awards tonight with um, Connie Froggett will come forward. She is a school board member and is also representing the Montgomery County Education Foundation tonight. Ms. Froggett. Thank you, Dr. Meyer, Madam Chair, Dr. Graham, and board members for allowing us to share this exciting recognition with you tonight. Tonight we celebrate the winners of the sixth annual Montgomery County Educational Foundation Creative Writing and Poetry Contest. Our contest was sponsored again this year by the New River Valley chapter of 100 plus women who care. And I would like to ask both our board members and our sponsors who were present in the room tonight to please stand and be recognized for all their hard work that helped make this happen. Board members and... And we'll be getting a group picture here in a minute. So. Our theme this year was I Have a Dream. In memory of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., we kicked off the contest on the MLK uh, recognized holiday, and it ran through the end of Black History Month. We had a record number of entries again this year, which is exciting. It means it's continuing to grow. We recognize winners in four age categories. Primary is grades two to three, elementary is four and five, and the middle school and high school. Tonight, we are recognizing our first place winners in each category. They will receive an award certificate and an iPad mini. Our second and third place winners have already received their prizes at their schools and been recognized there. All the winning poetry is on display in the lobby tonight and then will be on display for the next few weeks in our school board office lobby as well as on our website. All right, I will start with our youngest winner, and of course, family members are welcome to come up, and I believe we have administrators here as well to come up with them. You can take pictures, and whatever you'd like to do, and at the end, we will get a group pic picture with all four winners. So starting with the winner of our primary category, that is Heidi Schwartzwelder, a third grader at Margaret Beeks Elementary. Would Heidi, her family, and Mr. Mefford, and I believe she might have a cheering section back there, some teachers, you're welcome to come up. Um, okay, let me get down here. Okay, our judges had this to say about Heidi's entry entitled Peace. While this writing was brief, it was powerful. Through the writer's creative buildup of how peace feels, looks, smells, tastes, and sounds, the reader was masterfully transported to the writer's dream of a world at peace. The use of descriptive wording allowed the reader to clearly visualize the writer's dream of a world at peace. 
The writer's words embraced you and comforted you that maybe the dream of world peace is within our future. Congratulations, Heidi. Okay. The winner of the elementary category is Abigail Hewitt. Abigail is a fifth grader at Christiansburg Elementary School. But Abigail and her family and Miss Morgan too. Well, please come up. Our judge had this to say about Abigail's entry entitled, I Have a Dream in the Spotlight. This writer demonstrates sophistication of language with their use of figurative imagery. For example, this young author uses lines like, thousands of lights will shine bright as the morning sun, or a song as striking, sharp, and powerful as a vibrating bolt of lightning. Their poem also exhibits continuity and a clear structure. In other words, for a young fifth grader, wow. Congratulations, Abigail. <laughs> The winner of our middle school category is Zoe Zimmerman, a seventh grader at Blacksburg Middle School. And would Zoe, her family, and I believe we have Mr. Honeycutt here to represent Blacksburg Middle School, please come up. Our judges had this to say about Zoe's entry, entitled, If Dreams Were Silver Birds. This poem's organic imagery captured me from the first line and sustained me through the last. The voice of the author was crystal clear, and the control over line breaks and diction was exceptional. Bravo, Zoe. Congratulations. <laughs> Give Ms. Drake a chance here. She has multiple cameras. <laughs> Of our high school category is Sebastian Coase, and I believe he's here with Mr. Kitts, his principal tonight. And his dad. His dad. Okay, our judge had this to say about Sebastian's entry entitled Hope. This poem has strong imagery, personification, and voice that all work together to tell the current and urgent story of the title word, Hope. She added that she wished she could pick, up, pick the top 13 and just, instead of just the top three because the writing was so impressive. So clearly the competition was tough. So congratulations, Sebastian. All right, at this time I'd like to invite I'd like to invite our 101 plus sponsor up for a group photo. And if we have any board members that can join us quickly. Very 
impressive. And for our final recognitions tonight, if Carl Polly would come forward, he's our Director of Secondary Education, and introduce the Seniors of the Month Awards Program. Thank you, Dr. Graham, Dr. Meyer, Ms. Cron, members of the board. Very special highlight of our board meeting is the recognition of the Senior of the Month from each of our four high schools. Photos and leadership profiles are displayed on the presentation board in the lobby. Our presentation <coughs> format provides a snapshot of each senior and a quote from their administrator or teacher who nominated them for this recognition. Now it's my pleasure to present Chris Stewart, Principal of Auburn High School, Brian Kitts, Principal of Blacksburg High School, Chris Hewitt, Assistant Principal of Christiansburg High School, and Danny Knott, Principal of Eastern Montgomery High School to make these presentations. Good evening, school board members, Dr. Graham, Dr. Meyer. It's an honor and a privilege, a privilege to uh, present to you Auburn High School's April Senior of the Month, Adam Fithian. Adam, I'd like for you to come on up with your family. Adam's here tonight with his parents, Stephen and Michelle Fithian, and his siblings. If I could just take a moment and read a statement uh, by one of the teachers at Auburn High School who nominated Adam. Adam Fithian is a great young man whom I feel worthy of the Senior of the Month Award. Adam is a mature and caring young adult. It is evident in conversations with Adam that he is not just concerned with himself, but for the well-being of his fellow students. Adam is also a bright young man who is on top of his academics, yet continues to strive for better. It is always a pleasure to speak with Adam. He is always upbeat and has a positive attitude. I know Adam will go into the future and do amazing things. Congratulations, Adam. Good evening, Blacksburg High School is proud to present our April Senior of the Month, Miss Jocelyn Amadeo. She's accompanied by Mom April, Dad Philip, and sisters Emma and Lily. Would you all please come forward to be recognized? Senior English teacher Greg Lewis had the following to say, Jocelyn is energetic and comprehensive in her academic work. Her composition is exhaustive in scope and meticulous in presentation. Not only stellar academically, she is charismatic, a wonderful actress and singer, and has performed in both school and community theater during her time at BHS. Most importantly, she is a young woman of impeccable character. Congratulations. <laughs> Good evening. I'm pleased to announce to the school board that the March Senior of the Month for Christiansburg High School is Carly Custer. I'd like to ask Carly and her mother to come forward and be recognized. Here's what a few teachers have had to say about Carly. Carly quite literally radiates joy and optimism in her classroom. She encourages her classmates and praises their work daily. She allows challenges to fuel her creativity rather than to stunt it. Carly finds joy building up everyone she comes in contact with. She is dedicated, extremely hardworking, and is a fun, out-of-the-box thinker. Her musical talents are unmatched, and I've had the pleasure of watching her entertain a room for 40 minutes with just a piano and songs she has written. She is unassuming, appreciative, respectful, responsible, and one of the nicest kids I've ever had the pleasure to work with. Congratulations, Carly Custer.
Good evening, Dr. Meyer, Dr. Graham, Ms. Cron, and members of the board. It's a privilege tonight to introduce to you Eastern Montgomery High School Senior of the Month, Haley Kressel. She's accompanied tonight by her mom, Lynn, her dad, Kevin, and her little sister, Hannah, who is really excited about coming up here tonight. <laughs> Y'all come up here and join me. Eastern Montgomery High School math teacher Lisa Bissey had this to say about our Senior of the Month. I have known Haley for three years now, and it has been nice watching her grow and mature. As a sophomore, she was very quiet and shy. Her junior year, she would sometimes quietly ask me a question if she really needed help. Her senior year, she has really come into her own. It only took her three years, but it has, really, it has finally sunk in. If you need help, ask. I have told her if I don't hear her the first time, ask louder. <laughs> boy, oh boy, is she louder now. <laughs> and it's helping. She is often one of the few students in my class who ask questions, which helps me know what concepts the class may still be struggling with. She brings a unique perspective to my class, and her newfound confidence lets her wonderful personality really shine. We wish Haley good luck as she pursues a degree in education, and we hope she comes back and teaches for us. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Sorry. At this time, we would like to give our board members a chance to congratulate all those who were recognized tonight, so we will take a 10-minute break. Next item on our agenda is our public address. At this time and at each of our regularly scheduled meetings, school board sets aside up to 30 minutes for citizens to address the board about issues pertaining public education in the county. Each speaker is allowed a three minutes to speak and the screens throughout the room and on the computer will let a speaker know has 30 seconds remaining and when the three minutes is, uh, it has passed. I have a few individuals to sign up. I will read the names two at a time. When you hear your name, please come forward and state your name and address clearly. And again, at this time, I have to also emphasize that this is the time we hear the public not necessarily response, so it is not a conversation I'm with the board, but for board to listen uh, your concerns. So the first individual is Carol Ahas, and the second one is Mary Boyd. Good evening, I'm Carol Ahas, 4462 Sydney Church Road, Reiner, Virginia. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak. The first thing that I would like to do is to just ask everybody in the audience who is here in support of Ms. Janet Longer being retaining the, um, the Auburn Band Director position to please stand and show your support. Thank you very much. Wow. And then anybody else in the audience who is supportive of having community involvement in education and who believes that parent and student input is valuable if you would be willing to stand too, we would appreciate that. I guess it's all the same group. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. So, um, so I don't want to take a lot of your time today. You've heard from us uh, previously. But I just want to let you know that, uh, that we still have really grave concerns. We understand that uh, Administrators have expertise. We do not think that hires should be made by a vote of the students or a vote of the, the parents. But, um, but we feel like ignoring that will is also not, not wise. And we feel like one of the reasons that we were so happy, you know, in my family to get our, our daughter into the Auburn Strand is because that was a school that had a lot of community involvement. And I feel like when that's not valued, when parents are not seen as experts in what's best in their own children's education, that we're running into trouble. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Boyd, please come forward and stay your name and address. And the next individual will be Chris. 
Robeson? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Mary Boyd, 5645 Blue Springs Road, Hiawassee, Virginia. I'm aware that you've heard the many amazing ways Janet Longerbeam has helped the Auburn Band in the last year. I'm also aware you've heard the stories of the unspeakable tragedies we have overcome by Ms. Longerbeam's side, so I won't repeat them to you. Instead, I would like to tell you a little bit about the Auburn Eagles Band and our story. Our band is much more than a group of students who play music. We are a very close family, a family that consists of students, parents, and one very important leader, a family that struggles at times, a family that takes care of one another, and a family that loves each other. I can't speak for my peers, but as for myself, my story in the band started about three years ago. The band director at the time was Bob Priest. Mr. Priest was a very talented band director, and the band experienced many successes in his time as our teacher. Mr. Priest had hopes of us becoming the first group at Auburn to ever become a Virginia Honor Band. This quickly became a dream of mine as well. Our band has attempted a few times now to achieve this and has not yet been able to. The consistency of our playing has been wavered due to a lack of consistency in our program. It is difficult to grow and develop a superior sound with the lack of said consistency. There has been many hard times, whether it be the loss of loved ones or the failure at a competition, that has discouraged us and led us to losing sight of our goals. But there has always been the hope that one day we would overcome everything and continue growing into the superior band we know we can be. Ms. Longerbeam was always the one standing in front of us giving us that hope. Our band has nothing against Mr. Hand and we have no doubt of his ability to lead us to success, but I hope you can see how the success would mean very little without Ms. Longerbeam. Our band does not need to rewrite a story that is already incredibly inspiring, but rather finish the one we've already started. So I'm begging you to allow us the opportunity to finish writing our story. From her very first day as our substitute, Ms. Longerbeam's enthusiasm and encouragement had an impact on every one of her students. This not only happened for Auburn, but at, Radver at Radford High School where she had a similar impact. With grace and poise, she has led many bands under many difficult circumstances. Our band has not always been easy to deal with. There has been times where even we did not realize how much we truly needed Ms. Longerbeam. Even when we put ourselves down and she lifted us back up constantly, driving us towards success regardless of how hard it was. We feel that she has rightfully earned the position as our band director and it is our, in our best interest for her to continue driving us towards success. Taking away Ms. Longerbeam takes away our hope and the meaning of our success. Thank you. Thank you. Next to individual is Chris and then as Lacey Bailey. Hi, I am Chris Robiso. I live at 4071 Childress Road, Christiansburg, Virginia. I'm here to speak about the issue regarding the current band position at Auburn High School and Jen Longerbeam. I've already spoke at the previous meeting, but I would like to share new information with the board last time. Sorry, last time I handed out a petition to, I don't know your name, I'm sorry, <laughs> that had hundreds of signatures, and I've just now received, given her a petition written by Katie Hobbs with over a hundred more signatures. These are also, these are signatures of the high school and middle school students. I ask that each board member get to look at all the signatures and to read the petition that Ms. Hobbs has written. There are several people backing our cause that have not been able to speak or step forward because of their position as either MCPS teachers or staff, and they do not want to risk their job. They also believe that this is not the first time hiring and firing processes have been abused within the last four years. I would like to personally invite all the school board members here to the Auburn High School and Middle School concert to see for themselves how amazing Miss Longerbeam and the band really are. And as a final note, some people who do not support our movement think that this issue will go away quickly. This issue and everyone who follow this movement will not back down and will not stop until this issue is resolved. Thank you. Thank you. Next individual is Lacey Bailey and then Levi Skinner. Hi, I'm Lacey Bailey. I live at 2886 Fairview Church Road in Reiner, Virginia. Um, I spoke a couple weeks ago at the last board meeting and what I wanted to tell you wasn't our sob story again. It's not that at all. It's what I think about the hiring process. Um, 
I don't know Michael Hand, and I don't yet have an opinion on him, but I don't think it was right to hire him. We didn't get a say in what has happened. Band isn't like a normal class. We take it for seven years. That seven years every day of going in, playing an instrument, being with somebody who we trust normally and who we want to create music with. But we don't get any say. We don't get any opinion in who's hired right now. What we wanted was to have the person who has been with us for a year now to be with us and to help us grow instead of getting somebody new and not getting <laughs> and starting back where we had been. We want to be where we are now and work forward from that, not go back a step and then work forward. We've already lost enough that we don't think that it's fair. And I'm asking that whenever a next position that, some, that a group of students has to follow from sixth grade until 12th grade, the students get an opinion and the parents get an opinion because these people affect our lives in tremendous ways. Thank you. Thank you. Levi, Levi Skinner, come forward and state your name and address, please. <coughs> Levi Skinner, 2230 Huffville Road, Pilot, Virginia. Um, I would like to give you a bit of a timeline, as it were. March 2017, at All-County all Band for the high school, Mr. Priest, Mr. Bob Priest, had a stroke. None of us in either band knew what happened. We just knew that one day he was here, he left for this event, and then he was gone. It was chaos. It was really hard for us all because we didn't know what was happening. And once we did know what was happening, all we had was sub after sub, people who didn't really understand the band program, didn't understand us as a band, and didn't, in, in some cases, just didn't know what they were doing, just told us to play music. Then we had another week, just more subs. At spring break, we were told that Mr. Priest would maybe if we were lucky come back then we all got our hopes up we didn't know what was going to happen he wasn't there and then we got Mrs. Janet Longerbeam she brought us stability in a time when we had none fast forward to October 2017 with the death of Andrew Lutz we were all devastated we didn't know what to do and yet, while some teachers were just, like, confused about what to do about it, what to do to try to help us, there were counselors in the library, people we didn't know, people we didn't trust, people who we had no reason to come to. The only person who stood strong and helped us through this was Mrs. Janet Longerbeam. Fast forward again to February 2018 with the death of Mr. Krigger. Again, all of us were devastated. All of us didn't know what to do. And through the storm, Mrs. Janet Longerbeam gave us stability when all around us was chaos. Please do not take that stability from us for a second time. We lost it with Mr. Priest, and we lost it, and we don't want to lose it again with Miss Longerbeam. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next one is Caitlin Fisher, and then Chris Broadling after. <clears throat> Hi, 
my name is Caitlin Fisher. I live at 3592 Reiner Road. I'm a sixth grade band student. I think the decision is wrong of not hiring Ms. Longerbeam. As the AMS slash AHS band director, it was not fair to her or the students. She has helped me more than any other teacher. No matter what, she always has a smile on her face and picks us up no matter what or how much we struggle. I am very concerned about our future and band as we move forward. Forward, We need Ms. Longerbeam as our band director as we continue and grow. grow. We're, where is our future without this caring, dedicated person? I ask that Auburn Middle School will be heard and reconsider the decision to hire Ms. Longerbeam. Let her be a part of our future <coughs> as we move forward and make this band the best it could ever be. Thank you. Thank you. The next will be Chris Spradling and then Lauren Bittinger. <coughs> Good evening, Chris Spradling, 12 Victory Heights, Christiansburg, Virginia. Thank you for this time to speak. My sentiments have been stated by those before me this evening in regards to the atrocity at the Auburn Strand. So being we are at a school board meeting, I feel it prudent to start with some vocabulary words you may recognize. Engage, to occupy, attract, or involve. Empower, to give someone the authority or power to do something. Encourage, to give support, confidence, or hope to. These three words are used frequently in regards to advertising the mission of Montgomery County Schools, yet they were all disregarded when it came to the support of the students and community of the Auburn Bands and decision to crush a growing and viable program. With that being said, I will borrow three more well-known words. We the people. We the people have a vested interest in our community and its well-being. We the people will, not st will stand for justice when it is threatened. We the people will not stand for wrong decisions, nepotism, and backdoor politics. We the people care about the educators who have stood by us and our children. And to the board specifically, we the people vote. The great showman P.T. Barnum is credited with the statement, there's a sucker born every minute. We the people are not circus goers. Thank you. Thank you. The next one is Lauren Bittinger. Lauren Bittinger, 4410 Brush Creek Road, Pilot, Virginia. I'm a sixth grade band student um, at Auburn Middle School. Ms. Longerbeam stepped in for Mr. Priest, and we feel that she did 110% at her job. She has not only taught us music, she has taught us loyalty and commitment. We as a band would like you to reconsider and let her stay with the AMS and AHS band. Thank you. Thank you. Those are all the individuals sign up to speak at this time. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the board? Please come forward, state your name and address, sir. Good evening, my name is Kelly Brennan. I live at 4462 Sydney Church Road in Reiner. And um, it's been a month since this decision was passed down to us. And honestly, we're still in shock that we cannot quite wrap our heads nor our hearts around the reasons, the rationale for this decision. Um, as I say, I'm sure a lot of you are aware of band. Um, band is all about passion, and we're a very passionate group. Um, and so when one of ours is taken from us, we grieve, and we grieve hard. And we've done a lot of that this year, and this decision has uh, produced the same result for us. Um, we understand that life is hard, that lots of things are out of our control, and that uh, we have to move on, and yet um, it's hard to move on often, um, especially when we feel like um, our passion has been disregarded and disrespected. Um, and it may not have been, but that's the way we feel about it. 
and it's hard to move on when um, we cannot get a lot of information about the hiring process other than the actual facts of how it works. And I've been in touch with Mr. Meyer and many of you, and I understand how it works, and I appreciate the clarification on all of that. Um, but, you know, as other speakers have said, what, what to me is missing here is, is true compassion. Um, we're a bunch of folks that are hurting. Um, we know gold when we experience it, and we've experienced it um, daily under Ms. Longerbeam. Um, we've seen it in our children and the way they've responded, the way they've grown together, the music they produce, the struggles they've endured and, and triumphed through. Um, so it's just, it's mind boggling how such um, excellence that we've experienced could be passed over. Um, and, uh, you know, all I can tell you is you've heard our kids, some of our kids, there's a lot of notes and letters and emails out there. Um, and our kids know what's going on and they know um, that the world is not always fair, but um, they're pretty sharp and they, and they, they know um, gold when they experience it. And um, we're simply again asking you if there is any way possible Mr. to- Mr. Vernon, your time is up, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Is there anyone else? Come forward, state your name and address, please. Uh, Matthew Neal, 1590 Smith Creek Road, Christiansburg. I did not originally intend on speaking today. I thought that everything I had to say would be covered by this group of people, and it really has been. But So I'm not here to talk to you about what this band has been through. I'm not here to preach to you that accolades of Janet Longerbeam, and I'm not here to tell you that this is corrupt. I am here to ask you a question. What is important to you as the school board? What takes priority over anything else? Is it the achievements of the students? Is it the safety and well-being of the students? Is it your students getting good grades? I think, personally, my belief is that it should be the students in general. We here have been stripped of the opportunity to succeed as a band and to grow as we would like to. Uh, we've been told that the decision has been made by professionals, and I'm very sure it has. I'm sure everything is, everyone knows what they're doing, but I believe that the input of the students hasn't been taken as heavily as it should have been. Uh, I think that it is important to understand that we are the students of this school and we are the members of this band. And I think that we, as a band and as a group of people that's been through all this, would know what exactly we need. And I feel like that's not being as taken into account as it should be. We feel that we're not being taken seriously simply because we're students at times. We feel as if we're just not being listened to. And I'm, I'm sure we are. But I think that it is very important to understand that we are the members of this band, and we, we know what we need to succeed. And we need the stability that can only be provided by Janet Longerbeam. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address at this time? Please come forward, state your name and address, please. Hi, my name is Mary Paniagua and I live on 1555 Union Rally Road, Run in Virginia 24149. Uh, I'm not here to speak about like what Janet has done with, for us and what we've gone through as a band, but I'm here to address what this decision is, what this decision is doing to your students outside of school, because many students have quoted that I'm going to quit band because of this decision, and I think that that's an awful thing to do, but at the same time, you know, you're ruining their passions, their education later on in life, and it's also affecting their outside life in school. For example, I have an anxiety disorder, and band is a, plays a major part in that to help me 
get over it and stuff. And by making this decision, it's just making Ben make me have more and more anxiety than I already do have. And I think that this decision isn't being handled the way it should. And I think you should listen to your students because I, you're making us seem like we're students who don't know what we want. But if we we're adults and we know what we want, because if we didn't know what we wanted, we wouldn't be here trying to fix this problem that you guys have created. So I'd like to urge you guys to reconsider your decision and to please listen to your students and put them in consideration. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> At this time, I believe our allocated time has passed. So, and also I don't see any other hands up there. So public address is closed. This time we'll take a five minute break. Are you all right? Yep. And the next will be our consent agenda. Just a five minute break? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Sorry, my voice is getting losing my voice. <clears throat> wanted to know I found this picture um, oh. when Booker T. Washington. Yeah, this is the box. Um, 
I've had it for years. My husband had it. I think before that, his parents had it. Yeah, I haven't gone through to see if there's any more in there about the Christian Bergen situation. When that blue picture and um, and the and yeah, the dedication. I don't know. I don't really know. Yeah, they're all there. Yeah, I love this hat. So I'm gonna have to read through here and see if there's any more in there about it. But yeah, that's pretty cool. But it it. On the charity expedition. If you want to find for something, yeah, child, it's very interesting. Then it's just a lot of names. It's in here. It's interesting. I think it's over. Like. No, I don't know. Oh, I, I don't know. Sure. Oh, yeah. The record plots and wars to officers and soldiers. Mm. I didn't. I don't know. <laughs> From the Earl of Diamonds. <laughs> I thought they just like say stuff they want and then they just. Isn't this like, neat? This is just so neat. Oh. Put My this together. husband's family had it, so I don't know where. Um, oh, one of these kids. That's it. That's what held it edited by Charles Crush. You just said you didn't like her either. No, I didn't even list the board to supervise me. Oh, oh. Yeah, all the officers. Yeah, the one that was like. Mm. Look at how many women. Oh, I see a few. Yeah, I'm There's another one. There's another one. Yes. I don't have any computer. <laughs> yeah, did you ask him? That uh, shows how passionate she is. No, I'll just do oh, yeah. it. <laughs> what is this? Oh, no, that's not even typical. Oh, I have like a list of. He just. Like send me an email and interrupt you. So it was like, I just had to do it for one last time to get it. I mean, we all. Yeah. Oh, it's almost over. No, yeah, I don't know what the heck is going on right now. <laughs> like, I just kind of. Like, our homeschool population is probably like one of your graduate classes. How much? I want to see. We have two. I want to see. Yeah. <laughs> we have like three hundred. In the school. I can see that. Yeah. That's Booker not T. Washington like, dedicating okay. the Christian Park Institute. That's pretty good. <laughs> there are probably more schools that are just tiny. So like, oh, yeah. It's kind of better. Cool. Yeah. 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 Oh, they're just like really ready to return. <laughs> Next item is our consent um, agenda. If there's nothing to be pulled, we will consider it as it is uh, approved. You see a grant proposal, some field <coughs> trips, and our past minutes. Anything uh, you want to take it uh, from the consent agenda, or are we all good? Looking like we are good. Our We'll approve our consent items as they are. Next item will be payment of our bills. May I have a motion to pay our bills? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Uh, any discussions regarding our bills? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Our bills are paid. Next item is our business meeting, and it will start with our board member reports. Any board members would like to start to share? Ms. Martin? <laughs> yes, um, I do. I, I was able to go to a couple things. This was really cool. So um, first of all, I want to say that I got to attend the Auburn Elementary Passion Fair. Dr. Meyer had been talking about some of the passion fairs and the projects. Um, they were at all different times of the day, so the time that I was there, I got to see the second, third, and fourth grade projects, great projects, gymnastics, solar system, how to make a free throw, 
it was mapped out mathematically how to make a free throw and make the shot. So that was pretty impressive. Um, just to name a few, um, I want to thank Angela Smith again for the invite and the hospitality of Auburn Elementary. I always enjoy going there. Um, I was also asked to be a judge for a lip sync competition at Eastern Montgomery High oh School this past <laughs> Thursday, which was pretty awesome. Um, it was uh, put on by the Help Save the Next Girl and Yoviso, which I, which Yoviso, I don't know how many of you all are, you probably know, um, you Virginia speak out about traffic safety. This is an awesome group that I'm learning more about that I'm really interested in and would would love to see that more in depth at some of our other schools. I just think it's a fantastic uh, group. I have a lot of good things to say about it. Um, but the lip sync competition um, was a great event. It was lots of fun. Um, the school also helped out the community by collecting food for the food bank for the Shawsville community, which I thought was great uh, for the students to get involved in that and helping the community as well. Um, we had students and teachers that competed. Um, Winner, uh, the first place winner was Joel Gardner, who was a student. He did an excellent job. The second place winner was Miss Bissy and Miss uh, Rusgrove. They did an excellent job. Um, they actually sang oldies. It was great. It was like songs from my generation, so I was loving it. And then the third place winner was a couple named Tyler and Jamie, who just happened to be the homecoming king and queen, oh, who nice. stood in last minute for a couple that ended up not being able to do it. So they practiced like three times before the competition oh and they did a wonderful job. <laughs> so I just wanted to say thank you to the SRO, Jennifer Underwood and uh, Mr. Danny Knott and the whole Yoviso program and the coordinator, Casey Taylor, for doing a great job with that event. Um, it, was, it was wonderful. Um, and Yoviso um, also dealing with the student awareness about the traffic safety. I just wanted to bring to the attention that April is the Distracted Driving Awareness Month. So I think for all of our young drivers out there and ones learning to drive, that's something that can be um, looked at during this month with all the information out there and the, and the education on that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any other board members? Um would like to share? So uh, I was at Christiansburg High School uh, during the uh, walkout, and it was absolutely wonderful to see the young people um, expressing their concerns about their safety, as it was our students here tonight, you know, participating in the process. Loved it. So I know there are people who have mixed feelings about that, but it's, um, it was encouraging to me to see all the students come out and understand this is how you go about making a statement and make change. So I appreciated it. Thank you. Mr. Um, yeah, I was also able to attend a passion fair. I'm not sure if this was within the last month or, or not, but I, I attended the Margaret Beeks uh, one and I intended to attend a few others, but I had to be out of work, out of town for, for work. But I, I'm just really impressed, right? I mean, it, truly great. impressive yeah. if you guys haven't had a chance to. Um, to go, to go out and see one of those, um, it really is uh, incredible. And, um, you know, I, I think like some of you too, I, I have not, not an event that I've gone to, but I have spent some time in the last few weeks um, responding to some of the emails that we've gotten on, um, on the band issue, uh, trying to engage some of those folks. Um, I believe it was uh, Mr. Brennan that, you know, I think, summed it up on the you know it may not have been but it feels like it kind of a thing and I think that's important for us to um, you know make sure that, that people know that they are being listened to and that they are being heard there's just some things that we can't uh, delve into the details maybe that they, that they would like so um, so that's going on so that's it for me thank you Ms. Um, well most of it was spent with the poetry contest but I did get the chance to tour Falling Branch Elementary just as the new wing was opening and that was really exciting to see the new rooms and um, that, that that's going well and on schedule and hopefully we'll have it all open this fall, looks like we will, so I appreciate Dr. Meyer and the staff over there for giving me a tour of that right before it opened. Ms. Bond? I have nothing. I don't want to like skip, skip any. Two weeks, it's all I've done. <laughs> okay? <laughs> this is the bottom line. <laughs> Thank you.
Yes, Easter and power outages and snow. Yeah, no, I haven't left the shop in forever, so. Well, for the most part of actually the month, you know, I was sick, but I managed to do a few things. Um, uh, I think uh, with Ms. Fragut and I, 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 I wasn't sure if you will share, but we went to Hot Topics. I oh, think that's go ahead. The, yeah. Yeah, Hot no, Topics at Whitfield, and uh, basically uh, the, uh, the topics were around the community support in schools, Virginia two-tier uh, system of supports, project aware, and then the community partners and businesses, how the partnerships. And I did share, you know, a couple of our thoughts or what we heard with um, uh, Dr. Meyer and Dr. Graham already. Um, and then the, the, the last one is an individual that um, was a troubled child and dropped out of the school and finished the school with probably GED and then ending up, uh, I mean, his whole life story was very interesting, uh, but ending up um, uh, having the make the making foundation, and it's in Roanoke, and basically he is serving at-risk students, and the kids are doing, actually, you would have been very interested yeah, because bike. this person, maybe Ms. Fragger already shared, but did bike by hand from scratch, and his bikes were selling $10,000 plus and compete everywhere in Chicago bike festival. I mean, it just went on and on. Um, but but the, you know, the long sto story short, uh, he is teaching at-risk kids doing things hands-on and building everything from uh, scratch. And, and it's a little, little old store in, uh, I think, uh, Roanoke, uh, that they are functioning. It was pretty impressive what, who he was and you know, where he is right now. And the other thing I did, uh, I attended Blacksburg High School, um, KEA, Wind Painters Recognition by Department of Motor Vehicles. And it, he, uh, she's one of the regional winning, winners, and then there are eight regions. And she participated in Distractive Driver <coughs> Competition. And, and the, you know, the overall state winner will be announced in mid-April time. And her uh, license plate was Eyes on the Road that's very successful. It is a distractive driving contest, but, and most of the other license plates have actually cell phones on, on them, and her design did not have a cell phone, but a real eye, and then the road is there, so it's really, you keep your eyes on the road. And we're hoping, we don't know who is the winner, but we're hoping maybe she'll be the winner, and then we all buy license plates that <laughs> says eyes on the road. That's good. <laughs> But, but the commissioner, uh, DVM commissioner, uh, Mr. Holcomb, was there, and the Senator Edwards and Delegate Hurst attended, and uh, Delegate Rush sent uh, Miss Lynch also. So it was a nice, unfortunately, it was a, one of those snow days, so the, the, the high school student body couldn't participate in the event. So it was a nice day in the library. Uh, and the other one was uh, I attended also Passion Project, uh, Gilbert Linkus. Uh, I've been actually attending, um, I think I was in the Margaret Biggs, um, and I think I might be in Bellevue, and I think I did Falling Branch, and the, the, the fun part is seeing all the different schools doing all different things, and I don't think I ever see anything repeated, which was pretty, pretty mm -hmm. impressive, and then cookbook writing, and you know, all the animal interests, and sport, and NFL interests, and I mean, just the variety, the kids are passionate about it, it's, it's pretty neat, so. That will wrap up now. It's Maria's and Steven's time, student rep report. <laughs> what is happening in your schools? All right. So. <laughs> you may like to pull the mic a little bit toward you, Maria. Yeah, you can pull it toward. Yeah, it will come to you. Here we go. <laughs> okay, okay. Here you go. Okay. So in East Lump, we, we we won our first ever EMHS girls soccer team. They won their second game, which made history because it's the first ever soccer team. And we won against um, Galax by the slaughter rule. We won 10 to one, which was pretty impressive. And one of our seniors, her name was Kara Smith. She was a senior of the month. She won third place at the VHSL State Forensics Tournament, mm -hmm. which is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. And we also hosted our second annual lip sync battle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was so much fun. It really was. And we raised over, I think, 600 pounds of canned goods. 
And all the canned goods were donated to the local food pantry. That's great. Awesome. Yes. Wow. Awesome. A lot. Yeah. And we also have our EMHS beautification day coming up on May 5th. It was rescheduled. Yeah, it was going to be the Saturday, but they rescheduled due to the weather. And it's basically where students go out on a Saturday and like pull weeds, plant flowers, and clean up our school. The students who participate get extra credit, they get community service hours, and they also get free lunch and hosted by the SGA. Yeah, so. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> my name is Steven. I'm from Blacksburg High School. Uh, it's good to be back. Uh, spring break is over. I couldn't uh, sleep in until like 12 <laughs> like a.m. <laughs> um, so yeah, last month we had like the walkout and it was really successful. It was kind of snowy, like there was snow going in my face and I couldn't really see anything, but like there were so many people and it was just a huge circle in like the field. And then uh, it was also pie day, so I was just eating like some pie, it was really <laughs> good. And then just preaching about like safety and stuff. <laughs> um, so the, I'm on the tennis team, so we're like undefeated so far. So I know, that's good. That's I've good. been following you. <laughs> thank thank <Very> you. <laughs> Uh, one match I was like really sick so uh, I was really happy that I won because I could barely like say the score so the other guy was like what is happening but <laughs> that was fun that was fun we won <laughs> uh, so we had our last club day of the year and all of our club uh, clubs had a service project that we did and in my club I, I'm in National Honor Society and we did like some Easter egg hunt for the community and we kind of had all our members help like the little kids find the eggs and it was like real adorable it was good <laughs> um so we have our new boys and girls lacrosse teams that just started this year and they're off to a great start both winning their inaugural contests and our blacksburg band just got back from music for all festival in indianapolis and they had a great time and we have again been awarded blue ribbon status with superior ratings and that's pretty cool pretty cool um this week in our or this week is our annual project purple week and it's a yearly bhs initiative to highlight the dangers of alcohol and substance abuse and next week will be our big academic festival week and art show with the culminating culminating event as a spring festival and Year of the Artist celebration on Thursday, April 12th, and then our spring pep rally on Friday, April 13th. And uh, prom will be on the 21st, uh, 21st, and after prom will be on the 22nd, and uh, I have yet to find my prom dress, so I <laughs> hope to do that soon. And then uh, the month will end with our spring musical on April 27th to 29th. <laughs> and I, I have an essay due tomorrow, so wish me luck. That's it. There are many of us who could lend you a dress. I'm sure we have ones from the past. Yo, my favorite color is blue. Uh, I, I'll take black too, you know, like I'm, I'm flexible. Like, look at this. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you, Steven, and good luck in the SATs. <laughs> Next item will be our 2018-19 Special Education Annual Plan Approval. Okay, uh, the, the board is required to approve a special education annual plan each year. This year's plan is brought to you um, at your last meeting for review. The plan is brought to you tonight for your approval. May I have a motion to approve 2018-19 special education annual plan as presented? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. Any discussions, any questions? Are we all good? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We approve our plan. Okay. Um, tonight we're asking you to adopt a budget for the purpose of a public hearing. You'll adopt an operating budget uh, first and then a school nutrition budget. Uh, the budget hearing will be held on April 17th at 7 p.m. Um, here in this room. While the format for this budget is different, the requested funds have remained unchanged. Our priorities continue to be salary increases for our employees, maintaining employee benefits with no increase in employee premiums, technology uh, equipment and Chromebook sustainability, school bus replacement and capital maintenance. Um, also in the, in the attachment, 
um, that you may want to discuss at the same time uh, is a letter that is drafted. Uh, this letter addresses recent, um, and this, this is a letter drafted to the Board of Supervisors. The letter addresses recent discussions regarding uh, additional school resource officers at elementary schools uh, within the county. Uh, the letter reaffirms that uh, we support additional SROs, provided that it does not mean a reduction in school division funds. Um, and with your blessing, we'll be sending this letter um, to the county administrator tomorrow. So tonight, uh, we're asking that you adopt a budget for the purpose of uh, the public hearing on April 17th. May I have a motion to adopt the budget as presented for the purpose of public hearing on April 17th? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. Any discussions regarding the budget? Yeah, so I'm going to be voting no because I believe we should be asking, should have been asking for more, as I had stated before. So. Hmm. Well, and I would also like to mention to those left in the room who already know this, um, but this really is our bottom line budget. And so any cuts that are made to it affects what we can do for our students and that's just wrong because they are our future so um i need everybody i know that um, the mca mca is doing a great job of advocating and um, having good participation at the board of supervisors meetings and uh, we greatly appreciate uh, what you guys are doing um, to help us push um, public education but you know, like, like we've seen a lot in the media lately, it's not just us. Um, and it's really sad that public education is not valued like it should be. Because literally, these students are our future. So if they're not um, knowledgeable and ready for life after high school, um, I, I think we failed them. And it's not just the teachers are not failing them, it's the public that's failing them. And, and I think the public just needs to step up and, and determine what what is really important. Goonan, <clears throat> I, I just want yes, add yep. to add uh, to Ms. Graham's thing about the students being important and priority. I'm all for sending the letter to the Board of Supervisors. I, I know teachers raises are priority and I am all for that. But in my heart, as much as the teachers' raises are a priority, it is equally important to me that we get SROs in those elementary schools, not just for the students, but for the safety of the teachers, the faculty, and the staff as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anything you want to add, Ms. Baum? Any other comments? Okay, so since we're going on to the um, issue of the SROs, yeah, safety should be number one but it just should not be on the back of the school system to have that come out of our budget that is already. Bare minimum. It, it's, it's beyond <laughs> bare minimum. Yeah. Beyond <laughs> bare minute, minimum. Um, so to, for any portion of what we're asking for to be set aside for something as uh, Dana has said, the whole community should be supporting this or should, say, has, has, should be supporting this and not coming from the operations or capital budget of the school system. Okay. And Ms. Franklin, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I think that should be something that should come from the community and the community should be um, involved with that and that should be something that they agree with mm -hmm. and be important to them as well. Uh, absolutely. Um, and I, you know, last year we got kind of held hostage mm -hmm. with, yep. the, with the same situation. We're going to take this money here and do this there. Mm -hmm. We'll give it to you later, which had negative effects on how we're, we're able to support our school system last year. And um, again, it sounds like folks are trying to play that same little game. Um, and as long as I've been here, it, many times it's been the same, same discussion. Okay, so we gave you this money. It's up to you to figure out what you want to do with it, right? Well, if it's not enough money, then, you know, figuring out what you want to do to it is just the lesser of this evil or that evil. Um, so 
you know, I won't go on tonight, but I'll just say anytime you are ready to go, I'm ready to be with you. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Fraga, Mr. Chewbacca? Um, I'm going to be voting yes um, with the understanding that um, I'm supporting the superintendent on, you know, we, we talked in previous meetings about um, using different strategies um, with the Board of Supervisors and in, in, in years past, uh, I'm certainly of the same mindset as Ms. Franklin that we should be uh, truly uh, asking for and advertising a needs-based budget, which is this is what we need, you know, and, and if we truly did that, not thinking that we're going to get it, but just to let the public know this is what we really need. And I think, um, you know, there's pros and cons to some of this stuff, and I, and I get that, and I understand that, and I'm willing to try something different, but um, if, uh, if this budget does not come through, and if the games that, that Ms. Franklin are referring to are, are, are played, I think we have to uh, start having a longer view of this issue uh, like we've seen around the country um, with what happens when you go year after year after year uh, not properly funding uh, schools. Uh, I have uh, serious reservations um, about uh, the roles that everybody plays, I think, in this process, meaning um, you know, it is, it is the role of, it is our role, it is the role of the school board to determine how uh, monies are appropriated. And I think that uh, I've seen, just like Ms. Franklin was saying, uh, situations where that role is trying to be usurped to some degree. Um, and, I, and I don't think it's right. Um, and I think that we should push back on that. Um, and we should refuse to be held hostage by uh, that kind of a thing. So anyway, um, uh, as far as the, the letter on the SROs, uh, sure, I, it, I, I said this before in the, in the meeting two weeks ago. Uh, I'll say it again for the purposes of the record, but um, we, if it's a decision, should you have more SROs or not? Absolutely, you should have more if somebody's willing to fund it, but it's it's rarely that cut and dry, and, and, and this is kind of a zero-sum game when it comes to budgets, especially when you're talking about, um, you know, a county where we, where we haven't really, we haven't seen, I haven't seen a tax increase for operational needs, which we've needed for years uh, since I've been on the board and, and before, and so I think we have to be careful, and, and I think I would like to have a little bit more time, if you will, to determine the best way to spend uh, that money. I do think it's helpful to have um, SROs in our elementary schools for educational purposes and for safety, both. Um, so from a part-time basis, I, I, I support it. Um, you go from part-time to full-time at all the elementary schools, that starts to become a lot of money. I could potentially support it, but I think we need to have the discussion. I think we need to look at the, the research on on that kind of thing and, and determine where spending that money would give us the best bang for the buck from a safety point of view or even from an educational point of view. So that's my two cents. Oh, I know you're dying to. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to put my foot in my mouth. I will speak. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be more blunt and probably regret it. Our children should not be political footballs, and that's what they are in this situation. They were last year and they are again this year. And their education and their safety should not be pitted against each other Absolutely. in a budget battle. Yep. And that's what's going on again. What makes it worse is we were told by certain board members that they wouldn't do that this year. And yet here we are with that possible scenario yet again. Dr. Meyer has been transparent. We have been transparent. We have counted every possible dollar we think we might get. We don't even know for sure we're getting some of this. And then they want to turn around and take it away just like they did last year. I'll stop there. Well, I will, I will pick up and continue. I definitely like the idea, and I, in fact, I think shared the article from 2013 with with our board and with the Board of Supervisors too, 
in terms of the needs of uh, SROs, and this article written after, after uh, Connecticut event not even covered the recent events happening, but, uh, but the, the individual wrote the, wrote the article, it was an SRO or is an SRO, and even national school resource officers gave him an award. And the point he was making that he is not an armed, not just an armed officer in the, uh, in the building, but he's a mentor, especially this day and age when our kids need so much mental health need and, uh, and they're coming from broken families, so SRO is sometimes just a sounding board or helping the families get, get through the divorce. And then they are just buddies, role models. Uh, so they are not just, they're not just the people that carry guns in the, in the building. So definitely another adult in the building. That's the, that's the way I, I, I would like to see. Now, you know, of course, the safety, for, for, from the safety perspective, it is a need, unfortunately, this day and age. But, and I'm seeing as, an, as an, an, another adult that our kids can look up to or ask help or our teachers can refer. Um, so there are a lot of advantages, and I don't think there's a price tag for that. But on the, you know, of course, other side, I see, uh, in, 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 if you look at an umbrella of the government and, and, and the board of supervisors in charge, and we are under their umbrella as an education, educator, education piece, and the safety is another piece. So if they want to support, which we the, our, right now we are eight uh, resource officers in middle and high school, and they're not under our you know, personal role in terms of their salaries and benefits. So if they want to provide a public safety, and that's a public safety in schools, the students are public, and uh, so they have to provide however many they deem necessary. We have 11 elementary schools. It could be up to 11. Or if they just want to provide it for the county, that will be up to them. But that should come out of their public safety budget, not education budget for our teachers, for our books, for our educational materials, for our buses. It should not come out of that. So if they think it is important, if the citizens think it's important, they have to find the funds, whether it's a tax increase or allocated from somewhere else, but not from the school budget. That's for sure. And the trick that they've been playing, I'm personally really offended because I've been very good at trying to reach out each and every Board of Supervisor members from both party lines. And we had frank discussions. And I thought I made it clear our needs are really out there, nothing to hide. And there's not much to play around either. Uh, it's plain and simple, just asking you know, 1.5% and fixing the steps. And we can't even take care of the buses and the maintenance till they give their carryover back. So we've got to wait for that you know, another year, like, like the previous years. So we are really not asking much. So taking you know, uh, school resource officers' allocation out of that, or even thinking about it, is absurd, and I'm, I'm really disappointed in general. So I will stop there, too. Cause, uh, Any other? I, yeah, because I have to state also is you have. Our g job is to provide the best education we can for our children. It is not for us to provide SROs. That, again, falls within the means of the county to provide that safety. So uh, to, to think that that money, which means they would be our employees, basically, because it's taken from us, that's not our job. That's not our job. And putting us in a, in a bad situation, because it's not like none of us on this board can say, we don't want SROs. I mean, we don't want kids' safety. I mean, it, 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 that's also absurd to think that putting us into that position, we, we, are, we have to say that because we don't want money to be taken, but that doesn't mean that we're not for you know, resource officers or we are not for, for our kids' safety, but that's, that's, that's their job, and they have to come up with the money. So that's plain and simple. And I think in terms of the letter, um, I know it was posted um, on the site, so it's a public knowledge, and 
you all read and we tweaked a little bit after mm -hmm. both Ms. Franklin's and Mr. Chewbacca's suggestions too to make it a little stronger. Um, and, and I just need a thumbs up for that, but we are all good. Thank you. And now, any further discussion? Because I think we have motions on the table. I don't want to carry it away and forget where we are. If, if no more questions, we can, we can vote for the uh, public hearing. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. We have it ready for a public hearing. OK, thanks. Uh, next. Um, uh, we're also asking you to adopt a school nutrition budget for the purpose of a public hearing. The public hearing will be held April 17th, 7 p.m. in this room. The nutrition, school nutrition program is a self-sustaining fund. Uh, the proposed budget for next year includes a 10 cent increase in the cost of full price student lunches. We're asking you to adopt this budget for the purpose of a public hearing on April 17th. May I have a motion to adopt our school nutrition budget as presented to the purpose presented for the purpose of a public hearing on April 17th. So moved. Second. Second. Any <laughs> discussions regarding to that? It's pretty self-sufficient and self-explanatory, I think. I don't know what we'd do if it wasn't. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that is also true. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We have our nutrition budget ready to go. Okay, next, uh, Ms. Whitaker is here to provide an update on our instructional calendar. It is a uh, question um, in terms of, uh, I wanted her to answer for you how we make up days and, and how that looks and how much time is built in and where we are for a possible end date of school. Good evening, how are you? No more snow, no more snow. That's right, that's right. I closed out the slopes last, last weekend, so we are done. Um, so what I have for you here is the requirements from 8VAC 2131-5, which are the regulations establishing the standards for accrediting public schools. So the standard school year means a school year of a minimum of 180 teaching days or at least 990 instructional hours. So we plan every year with a minimum of 180 days. This year we had 186 days. Next year when we looked at that calendar, we're showing the end date as we, you know, the snow adds on. So we do plan to have 180 days, but as you know, sometimes snow occurs. And so then we can look at that hour model. And so as of March 29th, we do uh, forecast the last day of school to be May 25th, because I'm also forecasting no more snow. <laughs> um, and so that would end us with uh, 1,004.5 hours for this school year. Ms. Whitaker, you do know that five years ago tomorrow it snowed six inches. <laughs> Don't jinx <think> us. <laughs> I mean, it's Saturday, they were expecting something, but it's Saturday. I know. So. I've, I've seen it on the 18th of April. Yeah. Just not Saturday. That's yeah. my daughter's birthday party. Oh. Well, right now we have about two and a half days that we could miss um, without having to do anything different. And so, <laughs> so, hopefully, so hopefully that's hopefully where we stay. We're good. So no inside out pajamas and dancing around, right. please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no flush in the eyes, none of that. That's right. No pigtails or whatever needs to be. <laughs> Do you have any questions about this? Can we mandate any child that does a snow dance will have to go to school on Saturday? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, one thing, you know, our shortest day is our elementary day once you take out recess and uh, the lunch. And so, um, you know, next year, of course, this sort of uh, continues our conversation that we started last week about recess mm -hmm. um, now being counted as instructional time. That'll add more yeah. instructional hours. Right, which will yeah. add instructional That's hours next right. year, which allows us to, you know, and so it, it would it would be a lot more if it were next year. Even. Yeah. So um, we're excited about the recess um, um, giving us more instructional time and actually more, more recess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Our next item will be our unfinished business. Any matters of unfinished business for members? If not, we'll jump to the new business. Any matters of new business? I have a couple sure. of things, if you don't mind. Go um, ahead, Just wanted to let the board know that I was contacted by the Newtown Council member, Marissa Sachs, by email. 
and she is in hopes of starting a dialogue with um, the school board and the board of supervisors from the county um, with the town council. Uh, she had made the recommendation or the suggestion of wanting to put signs up at entrances, I'm assuming it's at the school, to the schools, uh, supporting our Christiansburg High School wrestling champions. Um, she feels like this would be a way to show our students we can all come together and show our town pride. So um, that was asked um, for me to table this evening um, for further discussion and, and seeing if the school board is interested in taking this further. I was under the impression that she wanted they wanted the signs at the entrances to the town limits, the way you see in a lot of communities. Okay, I, yeah. okay, is that what she wanted? I wasn't sure. She it didn't clarify in the email what entrances, yeah. but, and I was, but yeah, that's and fine I, too. I had that question right. where the, exactly yeah. the signs are going to be. Okay, in, so. and it sounds like it's a slightly contentious issue in the town of Christiansburg right now. Um, those who are strongly in favor of it and those who don't want to spend the money on it. Right. Mm. So, right. But we want to support our children, right? We want. To <laughs> Just as long as the school's paying for it. Yeah, we, we can put it as, a, as an agenda item to yeah. discuss that at, and a, I, at our I will next be meeting. Just to what, what, what else give you my doing thoughts in, in as to any other parts of right. the other times. We would want to be I, consistent. Well, we would, guess, definitely, what, yeah. <clears throat> we would what? definitely need more information yeah. on the. On the <clears throat> so in my voice yeah. on the cost and where those funds would be coming from and and those type of things as well I think sure and I'll give you my Steve, initial reactions probably not going to be would, ours but I would think it would be town that's a town I'm, thing I'm, I'm, yeah. to yeah. me I mean what I'm hearing is maybe they want our blessing, blessing our, to our say approval. okay y'all you guys can right. do that if you'd like to do it yeah. and so um I, mean, I think it's a great thing I just think it's something the town should take on if they want to do that that should be their I mean we're all about celebrating our students mm -hmm. and the great things they're doing right yeah. and we recognize that every mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. I mean that's that's right so maybe that person needs to take it to the town of Christiansburg and say hey mm -hmm. you know you've got this great wrestling team that doesn't seem like you want to really mm -hmm. acknowledge and they just recently at their town council meeting they recognized our wrestlers at their town council yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. meeting so i mean I they, think they everybody do, yeah. is aware mm -hmm. it's just we just like you said have it publicly. what else do you want to do right 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 it's like the pizza box thing yeah. that you learned about when you went to yeah. one of your S uh, vsba sessions yeah. how you want to yeah which um leads me to think about a story that i saw i, I believe it was in bedford that the uh, Art students did um, banners, you know, like the that you see on the light poles, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and they created those themselves, and they were absolutely phenomenal. They were gorgeous, right? And they they uh, talked about how folks who had even come through the town were so impressed with them, and how could they bring that back to their communities and things? And I think that would be just something mm -hmm. wonderful mm -hmm. to be displayed. Yeah in our towns mm -hmm. that yeah. our children's artwork in in banners it was, it was just That's a gorgeous great idea. that is a yeah. great idea yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i mean we definitely have talented enough kids That's to design sure. and make those absolutely yeah. those types yeah. of yeah. banners <laughs> celebrating our teams mm -hmm. yeah and we, it doesn't have to be just you know for one thing it, right. like you said the teams mm -hmm. it could be for um, like the year of the artist, like yeah. you did at yeah. High this School. Was, this was, yeah, this was, they were all different. Everybody yeah. did their own banner and yeah. they put them up and they were, it it's was gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's yeah. I'm all for fun. art. That would, yeah. be that would be good. Good idea. If there are no other new business, I'll ask for announcements and information. Any board member like to announce any event and <clears throat> I have an announcement for an event. Um, I just want to make sure everyone doesn't forget the Help Save the Next, Next Girl Safety Summit, which is going to be this coming Saturday at Christiansburg High School from 10 to 2. Um, it's sponsored by the Help Save the Next Girl chapter of CHS and with the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office. Um, if you have not gone to one of these, I think it really the first one was last year. Um, it's, it's a great thing for our middle school and high school students, basically, is what it encompasses. Um, it, it gives them safety presentations on online safety, personal safety awareness, peer pressure, 
substance abuse, just everything that, that these kids at that age would, would run into um, in, their, in their everyday life. And not only do they provide things for the children, and it's free, by the way, there's no cost, um, there's a presentation for the parents uh, from one to two about online safety. And there's, there's gonna be things going on for the kids to do during that time. The kids aren't allowed to be in the parent presentation, but it gives the parents a chance to go in and learn things. Um, if they should have any questions, they're able to ask. It's just a good, good, it's just a good, good thing. So, um, like I said, again, the event's free, and uh, all the students who come will get a free lunch. Last year it was pizza and they get a t-shirt too. So um, it, it would just be a good thing to, to get out there and for our students to be a part of. And what are the times for them? It's Saturday from 10 to two. Any other announcements? Mm -hmm. And the next item will be our agenda preparation. And you'll see our next few meetings. And 17 one will be the public hearing about our budget or part of the part of the meeting. Then we have a joint meeting. Question. Is that public hearing going to be here in the boardroom since it's a public hearing? It is. Yes. Okay. Yes. Initially, we we we, were, we planned it at the Eastmont hosting us, right. but because there's a public hearing, it's this is a better location yeah. for that. So we did a change. And our, our we have a joint meeting with the board of supervisors on the April 30th. And we're going to host them at Falling Branch Elementary School in one of the big, wide hallways. <laughs> and it's looking forward to show off uh, our new building. And then May 1st is where we approve the budget, um, if all goes well, if we know what we are approving by that time. Um, we don't have any other questions. We're ready to get into the closed session. Our next order of business is closed session. May I have a motion to go into closed session to discuss one personnel matter and two student matters as authorized by section 2.2-3711 of Code of Virginia. So moved. Second. A motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Now we are in a closed session. <laughs>